Hello again, I am Blunty. This video is half rant and half rage and half excitement about some new stuff that's happening around Fallout 76. Now, Fallout 76 has been getting a lot of hate, I'm sure you've noted. Some of it has been earned by the general state of the game, bugs and performance issues and missing features and such, but much of the hate is just people dogpiling on. It's pretty clear at this point. It's just bandwagon jumping. I mean, it's gotten to the point where people are coming to my videos about this game just to thrash and whine and screech about it. Some people who, it's pretty clear from context, aren't playing, have never played and never intended to play it in the first place. They're just, they're just seeking out these videos to yell into the void about it because why are you angry? So before I dig into the main subject of this video, which is new features and bug fixes and some exciting stuff, let's just hang an ornament on this kind of behavior. These people are getting mad about a game they don't own and are spending their time, their precious limited lifespan, seeking out, clicking on and typing out screechy, whiny tantrum messages on other people's content because... Wait, again? Why? 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 Why, why are you mad? It's because people like something that you don't like? Okay. And it's especially bad when all most are doing is copy-pasting, parroting something they've seen someone else say, which in a lot of cases I've seen wasn't even true to begin with. And I know this to be a fact because I read every single comment that's ever posted on my videos, always have done, and I see these copy-pasted comments. I see these people phrasing things the exact same way, just parroting something that someone else has said, didn't bother to check whether it was true. Now, I get it. This game has issues. Undeniably, this game has issues. The core game itself isn't attractive to everybody. No game is. I, for example, see absolutely no attraction in spending my time playing Fortnite. Obviously, that opinion is not everybody's opinion now, is it? And yes, Fallout 76 is not Fallout 5. It was never intended to be. It literally grew out of an idea Bethesda had for Fallout 4 that they kind of split off into its own thing because it was just too big, too complex, and too much work to build into Fallout 4 without delaying the release of that game by years and years. And they didn't want to do that, so they spun it out into its own thing. They've never hidden this fact. They've never presented this as Fallout 5. They've always been very clear. Hey, here's an idea we had for Fallout 4. We didn't get time to put it into Fallout 4, but we kept tinkering away on it. It got bigger and bigger and bigger, so we ended up making its own thing. But do you want to know what I do when there's a game out there that I don't like or I think is crap? Or maybe it just isn't a game I'm interested in playing. Well, I go and do things that I enjoy because I'm going to die someday. So I don't spend my days plopping around on other people's YouTube videos and comment sections and forums screeching at people who are playing a game that I don't want to play, and God forbid, getting angry at them because they're enjoying a game that I don't want to play. Don't like Fallout 76? Don't want to play it? Think it is quote unquote a trash game? Fine, good. Potentially a very valid opinion. That's fine, but spending your limited time alive seeking out places so you can whine about it and getting all super tantrum mad that someone else likes a game you don't like? Dudes, come on, get a life, or get a better one. Is this really how you want to spend your day? Now, as all that will clearly trigger a bunch of idiot knee-jerk responses from people who won't spend even a minute thinking about that behaviour, stepping back from their behaviour, taking some time to get some perspective on that behaviour and think about what they're doing with their life, let's dig into the new news stuff for those of us who are actually enjoying the game while those thrashing babies are busy furiously typing without punctuation. Bethesda, overnight, at least from my time zone perspective, now that we're clear of all that American Thanksgiving stuff, have finally posted something in response to the more legitimate complaints and feature requests from the gaming community. It comes with the usual boilerplate stuff, like how they love feedback from the community, how they're listening, how they're enjoying the screenshots and stuff, and how they're working hard, and how they're committed, etc, etc. So you know the stuff that all the devs say when faced with a community of players who want their fun to have less, you know, rib knives in it, so the fun is more fun. To wit, on December the 4th, the next patch is bringing some super welcome stuff. They're increasing the stash limit, something I and a lot of other players have been constantly butting our heads against in a game that spins on an axis of looting and crafting materials. I rather like having a large supply of crafting materials, so every time I need to fix something or craft something, I don't have to then spend an hour going out in the world and collecting the stuff that I didn't have space to store. Doing that kind of breaks the rhythm of the game for me quite often, so having a boosted stash limit is extremely welcome. 
However, they're boosting it from 400 pounds to 600. Not a huge increase, but it's something. And they say it's relatively conservative while they keep an eye on what this increase to tracking user storage across the server does to server stability. If it works well, hopefully we'll get even more storage space in future updates. If it doesn't work well, well, at least hopefully they'll learn some more about how to fix it. They're also fixing some issues with boss monster loot and with an effect of one of the special weapons, which lasted two hours instead of 30 seconds or something. And they're fixing the issue related to respawning when you die over encumbered, something I've heard many, many players smash up against. Because again, inventory management is a constant battle in this game. They're also fixing an issue where some players became stuck inside their power armor, but there's more than one thing causing this apparently, so that's still an ongoing investigation. They're fixing one of the bugs that causes that, apparently. Then a week later, if all goes to plan at least, <laughs> plan, Bethesda, on December 11th, another patch will, possibly, hit. And this one comes with much more features, not just bug patches. They're finally adding push to talk to the voice chat options for PC players, something that should have been here at launch and something already natively supported by the third party Vox client they licensed for the game, so it should have been very easy and very quick to fix. The only reason it's taking weeks to put this in can only be contributed to them scrambling so much and spending so many personnel on other stuff that's broken in the game. My question is though, after a few weeks of playing this game with voice chat turned off because having it on constantly as is the default is just super duper stupid and annoying, most people I know playing this game have turned voice chat off completely. Is it too late to change that habit? When push to talk comes in, are we all going to remember to turn it back on again? Uh, I don't know, we'll see. This patch also brings PC players official 21 by 9 resolution support and at last field of view settings. Field of view, which just a week or two back Bethesda claimed was impossible to implement because it messed with the game's animations and such, suddenly it's impossible again. Oh, they really are magic at Bethesda, aren't they? I mean, we already knew they were lying, because you could, as a user, as I have done, change the field of view by manually editing a special custom any file with corrected settings in it, and it does work fine, by the way. But having it built into the graphics settings interface so, you know, the average Joe can also use it is obviously a better solution. Playing at a wider field of view has certainly made my time in this game so much more comfortable on my eyes. If you're on a console, you'll of course still be stuck with that sickeningly narrow field of view. Sorry about that, console people, but seriously, what the hell are you doing playing a first-person shooter on twin sticks anyway? Get a mouse and keyboard. Bloody retrobates. Hopefully, they also include the ability to turn off motion blur and that rather oddly unreliable depth of field stuff and all that crap, because I've done that in the any file again, and the game looks so much crisper and nicer when you do that. Although that said, it did cause a couple of graphical bugs and a little bit of flickering here and there, which is kind of annoying. Another much requested feature is coming in that we will be able to respec our characters after level 50, which is the soft cap for the game. You'll be able to choose between a new perk card or moving a special point you had previously allocated. This is a bit of a balanced choice here. Instead of just letting us respec a character from scratch, you can only sort of do a little bit of respec per extra level you get. So those people who have power leveled up to, you know, level 80 or level 120 or something like that, it's going to be a bit of a money the ass for those guys, but you know. We're also getting a couple of very welcome features around player camps. Currently, if you join a server and someone else has a camp where yours is supposed to spawn in, yours will be automatically packed up and you're forced to move it somewhere else, which is annoying. But with this patch, when that conflict is detected, you'll just get the option to flip over to a different server where there is space for your cap to spawn in where you wanted it to and where you built it in the first place. So that's super nice. And this was, in fact, a community suggested solution. I've seen many, many people suggest exactly this solution. So it's kind of nice that they're implementing it. Hopefully they don't Bethesda it up. Know what I mean? Secondly, we're getting a feature they're calling Bulldozer. Unlike the settlement build system in Fallout 4, where you could select and scrap trees and other obstacles that were in your way, or just perhaps aesthetically unwanted or oddly clipped through your structures and whatnot, Fallout 76 had that feature from the otherwise near-identical build system removed. Which was weird. Now though, with this patch, the bulldozer feature will allow you to remove small trees and small rocks and other obstructions and annoyances, and just to clean up the area around your build too which is super duper welcome. 
They also make claims that they're working on bringing patch size down. So, you know, you don't have to essentially re-download the whole entire game whenever they change something, which is yet another artifact of just how out of date and clanky this cobbled together old game engine really is. Everything said and done, Yes, I'm still playing the game. Yes, I'm still enjoying the game. Yes, I've had a few server crashes lately, which with no sense of coincidence whatsoever is around the exact same time that an exploit to make carry limits unlimited was spreading through the community. So maybe don't knee-jerk blame Bethesda for all server instability, when it's far more likely in this case it was the players themselves causing the issue by cheating and exploiting bugs like this one. How it hasn't occurred to more people that this exact exploit has been the cause of server instability, I'll never know. Because it's because it happened at the precise exact same time as we started seeing less stability on the servers. Adoy. One plus one equals two, guys. Duh. Aside from the bugs, of which I've been lucky and only encountered a few relatively minor ones, I am, honestly, enjoying my time with the game. I've been spending my evenings over the last few nights just winding down with some questing and some material gathering and exploring in solo mode. Every now and again I'll come across another player and we wave a friendly hello as we pass, or I'll pop in to assist an event and then go on my merry way, and I've had absolutely no problems at all with PvP or griefers and such. And soon one of my absolute besties will be starting the game on PC too, and I'm really looking forward to having some co-op stuff with her, which I've only as yet done a small bit of with the viewers during some Twitch streams. So yeah, I'm encouraged to see Bethesda addressing issues and features and bugs, and I'm enjoying the game for what it is, not putting it on blast for what it isn't and never was meant to be, which bookends this video nicely. It's a big issue. A lot of people uh, with the hate on this game, people just not getting that it's just stupid to be screechy about a game for not being a different game. It's like if Corsair or someone released a new mouse and everyone who wants a new keyboard starting shitting their pants in flailing internet rage and review bombing the mouse. See? Sounds idiotic when I use that metaphor, doesn't it? Think about what you're doing, guys. Come on. Fallout 76 is not Fallout 5 and it was never meant to be. And that's okay. It's okay for this game just to be this game. Thanks for watching, at least those of you who did watch and didn't just stop, you know, midway through to stamp out an angry comment because I'm saying things that contradict your self-righteous anger. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.